As 2014 comes to a close, the United States and Cuba are back on speaking terms. 54 years of Cold War hostilities are coming to an end. The change was signaled just two weeks ago when Presidents Obama and Castro made simultaneous historic announcements on restoring relations. CCTV's Michael Voss is in Havana. And Michael, why did it happen now? Mike, for President Obama, the midterm elections are over. He's not seeking re-election. And by doing it now, it allows two years for the whole process to settle in, potentially making it harder for the Republicans to overturn it should they win the White House. Then there's the question of the prisoner swap. The American prisoner, Alan Gross, was said to be suicidal after five years in a Cuban jail. Had he died here, it could have set the whole process back 50 years. And it's hard to stress just how important the case of the Cuban spies is for, for this country. They're considered national heroes. The government has been campaigning for 16 years internationally to secure their release. Now, President Raul Castro has done it. All of the spies have returned home. This has been a triumphant end to the year for Cuban President Raul Castro. After months of secret negotiations, he secured a historic agreement with the United States to end more than half a century of confrontation and restore diplomatic relations. Viva Fidel! Viva! Cubans took to the streets, celebrating what they hope marks the end of one of the last major leftover conflicts from the Cold War. Now they're wondering what benefits it will bring. It's been a busy year for Cuba diplomatically, with visits by world leaders from China and Russia, amongst others. In January, Raul Castro hosted a summit of the Community of Latin American and Caribbean States, or CELAC. It was created to include Cuba, but not the United States and Canada. Cuba had its first face-to-face -face secret negotiations with the U.S. in June of 2013. That same month, Cuba refused to allow the U.S. whistleblower Edward Snowden to fly here, while Washington didn't make a big issue about Cuban weapons found hidden aboard a ship bound for the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Perhaps the turning point was Cuba's rapid response to the Ebola crisis. For the first time, the U.S. administration publicly applauded Cuba after it sent hundreds of doctors to West Africa. Just because the two sides have agreed to restore diplomatic relations doesn't mean they've sorted out all their differences. Cuba is not about to change politically, and there are likely to be all sorts of difficulties and confrontations along the way. Already, there is conflict over this woman, Joanne Chesimard. Asata Shakur, as she is now known, is an American fugitive convicted of killing a police officer. She escaped from prison and fled to Cuba in 1984. The U.S. wants her back. Cuba says it granted her political asylum. Negotiations are due to begin in January on reopening the embassies. The U.S. Treasury and Commerce Departments are also due to report next year on just what changes will be allowed to ease some trade and banking limits and expand travel. Uh, Michael, you mentioned this case of the U.S. wanting Cuba to return the fugitive Asata Shakur. What other major differences or difficulties are still out there to be resolved, do you think? Human rights is one of them, Mike. Were there to be mass arrests, for example, of dissidents in Cuba, it would be very difficult for Washington to go forward with the process. And on the other side, Cuba is waiting to be taken off the list of state sponsors of terrorism, which has very severe banking and financial sanctions. Were President Obama to keep them on the list, that too could create serious problems with the process. All right, Michael Voss, live force in Havana. Thanks so much.